Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to show you how to use Flash SQL Alchemy to interact with the pre-existing database. So a lot of people have asked me to do this. So I want to show you two ways that you can interact with a pre-existing database without having to set up models yourself. So first, let me show you the database I have. So if I use SQLite 3 and then db.sqlite 3, um, I can look at the tables. So dot tables down here, and then I can see I have four tables in this database already. So for example, customer is just a list of customers. And then if I look at product, for example, uh, select star from product, we see that there are three products in my database. So instead of writing classes for this, like you normally would in SQL Alchemy, I just want to use those tables in my app without having to do that. So there are two approaches that you can take. You can use reflection or you can use auto mapping. So reflection means that it just gets the information from the table and uses it as a table only. So you won't be able to do things like create new objects for this table. You'll basically only be able to query it. Whereas auto mapping tries to create the equivalent class for the table. So like you write a class for your models in SQL Alchemy, AutoMap tries to do that for you. So I'll show you both approaches. So we can start with the reflection, which just allows us to query the table. So I already have everything set up in terms of configuration. I have my database URI and I've instantiated Flash SQL Alchemy. So what I need to do is think of a table that I want to reflect. So let's reflect the customer table. So I'll create an object here, and this is going to be a table object eventually. And what I'm going to do is use db.table. And first I need to reference the name of the table in the database. So the name of the table is customer. And then I need to pass in uh, a few things. So first I need to pass in the metadata, which is on db.metadata. And then I need to set auto load equal to true. And I need to set auto load with equal to db.engine. So that's all I need to do. And then I will have access to this customer object. So what I can do down here is in the route, I'm just going to basically run a query. The query itself won't be that important. It's just to show you that I can interact with the database and the route itself won't return anything. So first thing I want to do is perform a query on this customer. So I can say something like uh, DB session query, and then I take this customer that I have and just call all on it. So because this is a table object and not a Flash SQL Alchemy object, I can't do something like this. So customer that query that all this only works with flash SQL alchemy classes like that inherit db dot model so just keep that in mind you have to use a session directly when you want to query from a table like this so what i can do is i can say something like uh, results equals that and then for r in results i'll just print out r dot name because the customer table has names so i'll save that and i'll start up my app and i'll just go to the route once so we can see it appear on the console. Okay, so I went and now looking at the console, we have a bunch of names here. So these are the names from my customer table and I didn't have to create a class to represent this table first. I'm simply using this db.table to get access to the customer table and then I can perform this query. So there are about 1500 names in there. That's why you see so many. So the second approach is a little more flexible in that it tries to create the equivalent class um, that you would get if you wrote the code directly. So let me comment out this approach. And the second approach, first we need to import something called auto map base. So this is going to be from a uh, SQL alchemy dot ext dot auto map import auto map underscore base, just like that. And then we can create the class that represents a customer, but let's try a different table. So let's try the product table, for example. So the first thing I need to do is I need to use the auto map base. So I'll create a variable called base, and we're going to take the auto map base and just call it. Then we're going to prepare. So this is like reflecting the tables. So base.prepare, and I need to pass in the engine. So db.engine. So this is just the connection information for your database. So basically, uh, object form of this. And then I need to set reflect equal to true so it can get the tables. And then once I do this on base, 
will be a bunch of classes that represent my tables. So if I want the product table as a class, I can do base.classes.product, lowercase. This is the name of the table, product. So if I wanted the order table, it would be order. If I want a customer, it would be customer, but I want product. So now that I have this product here, what I can do is I can use it in the same way. So I'll just take this product and I'll put it there. And I believe the products have names on them. So uh, let me just restart the app. And then I'll just run this one so I can see. Okay, so we have first product, second product, and third product. So those are the three products that we have in the database. So like I said, I can use this product like a SQL Alchemy class, so I can actually go ahead and create a new one. So let me comment this out momentarily. And what I'll say is a uh, new product equals product. And then the product takes in a couple of things. It takes in a name and it takes in a price. So the name will be new product. And just to show you what's going on, if I open up the database again and I use schema, so if I go to the product table, we see it has ID, so we don't have to worry about ID because it's a primary key and it auto increments. So we have the name, we have the price, and we also have a monthly goal. So we can put the monthly goal in there as well. So the price, let's say the price is 50 and the monthly goal will be 1000. So that's what I want for my new product. So now that I have this new product object, I can add it to the session. So db.session add new product and then db.session commit. So let me start up the app and I will just go to the route just to execute that code. And then I'll comment this out and uncomment this here. And I'll run it and see if the new product was inserted into the database. So just ran it. And I can't see anything. Let me restart the server. Okay, so there we have it. So the server didn't restart the first time, so it ran the code twice. But we see that it has first product, second product, third product, and then two new products. So if we actually go into the database itself and select star from product, what we see is we have the first three products that were there before I started and the two new products and the second one uh, has the has a different primary key, but it's the same information because the server didn't restart correctly in debug mode. But we see that we're able to add something into the table uh, without having to create a class first. And if you want to do something like joins, so um, let's say base classes uh, order and if I wanted to do something like join so um, let's say I want to query well I'll comment this query out and I'll create another one so let's write a query for order so let's do DB session dot query order and let's get the count so let's call this order count and then we'll just print this out so print uh, order count and we'll run the app and let's just run the route really quick. And we see there are 1,510 orders. So if we add a filter on here after joining, so let's join the product table. And let's filter, let's say product ID equals one. So only the orders for product ID one will count. So let's try this again. So it's 1,510 the first time. The second time is 507. So it's obviously less because there are fewer orders. So now let's try number two and it should be a number that's pretty close. Let's see, uh, 481. So we see we can use the order and the product classes just like we would use them had we written them directly. So that's all I wanted to cover in this video. Uh, if you have any questions about this, feel free to leave a comment down below. If you want to learn more about Flash SQL Alchemy from me, I have a free course available on my site. So you can just go to prettyprinted.com and click on Flash SQL Alchemy Basics, or you can click on the link in the description below to get here. But basically, I just have a bunch of videos on things you can do in Flash SQL Alchemy. So if you want to learn more about Flash SQL Alchemy, then go to my site. So if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe. Thank you for watching, and I will talk to you next time.